How's it going guys? I'm your host Karban Gaming. Welcome back to another very special Adventure Quest video and for today's video we are going to be talking about seasonal items that you may want to get inside of Adventure Quest. Now I'll be covering all items ranging from uh, items that free players can use all the way up to the heaviest pay to win of players. Okay so there is sure to be something for everyone and keep in mind that this video is accurate as of the time of this recording which is on 22nd May 2021. The time at which you may be watching this video may be months or years down the road and that may cause some of the information in this video to be outdated as the game is constantly getting updated every single week, new items may be released and on top of that some of the older items may get balancing changes like nerfs or buffs. But uh, that being said, this is still going to be a very good video if you're looking for a one-stop place to check out on all of the seasonal items that are worth picking up. Also keep in mind that some of these items are just uh, strong or good items to pick up. They may not be best in stock for you as everyone's uh, inventory and play style is different and of course uh, the spending level for every single player is different. So depending on what you have in your inventory, these items may or may not be worth to pick up depending on your build and your spending level. Without further ado, let us jump right into the video. So to kickstart the month of January, we have the New Year's Surprise spell. This is a spell that has been around since 2019 and every single year after 2019, they've released a slightly different version of this spell, just with different name and a slightly different animation, but the effect is still the same. You can choose between the SP and the MP version and this spell is basically good for any build as it boosts your BTH. It is a quick cast so you can obviously combine this with Purple Rain for some pretty crazy synergy. But uh, keep in mind that this is a sort of pay to win spell as you do need to spend Z tokens in order to get the spell. You can find the spell inside of the limited time shop. The next item or items that we have for January is the Frostville Delivery War Rewards. Now January is usually the time when the Frostville Delivery War finishes and the Frostville Delivery War Rewards, they are different every year but I highly advise every single one of you guys to go ahead and pick up any of the items. Do continue to watch my videos to hear my review on the items but most of the time the delivery war rewards are usually really good almost on par with the Frostville gift boxes themselves so I will highly recommend every single one of you guys to go ahead and pick up the Frostville delivery war rewards for that year as well as they'll go permanently rare once the uh, Frostville delivery war finishes okay the only way that you can get them is if you go ahead and buy the Frostville uh, painting for that year but I do not think it is actually worth to spend money to go ahead and buy the Frostville painting for that year unless uh, for some weird reason you are unable to go ahead and get the delivery wall rewards for that year or you just really like the quest for that year. So for February, we have the Golden Gift Box Cross Game Extravaganza event every single year during February and this is basically an event for the large spenders, okay? For people who are willing to spend a large amount of Z tokens on AQ's version of uh, Gacha, which is the Golden Gift Boxes, then there are uh, there is no uh, particular item that... Uh, I can recommend here because the items change every single year but if you're a huge spender I highly recommend you guys to go ahead and check out the cross game extravaganza event be sure to look for my videos as well as check out the uh, info subs on both the forums as well as the discords to see if there's anything worth picking up the next item that I want to talk about is the groundhog pet so this item comes to the limited time shop around groundhog's day and you can toggle between two modes. In damage mode, it deals full damage plus 5% damage from Mastercraft and booster mode, it reduces incoming wind damage. Okay, to do this, it pays 100% damage to reduce incoming wind damage by 28.57%. The boost is then modified by Charisma and Endurance equally. This means that 250 Charisma and Endurance are needed to receive the full effect. Additionally, you can overcap the boost if your Charisma and Endurance are greater than 250 though only to 1.1 times potency. Okay, uh, while this effect is pretty good, it should be noted that investing in endurance is not common for a lot of players and most people usually will not be able to take advantage or full advantage of the Groundhog's effects. Furthermore, the damage reduction is additive and as such, it can be combined with additive wind resistance miscellaneous items to produce uh, some interesting results. Okay. A particularly interesting strategy is to use the zombie hunter set for those who actually have it to force undead monsters to deal wind damage and then use this pet to drastically reduce the damage that they deal. I know, uh, I believe it was Gwen who actually used this to go ahead and defeat the level 500 unbeatable uh, 
Void Knight Bane House Guard. So it's quite interesting. Hearts Defender is a Mastercraft Fire Shield that can restore SP at the beginning of your turn when an attack is blocked. So the more hits that you block, the more SP the shield will actually heal. This comes in the 12,000 Z token package that returns uh, around February each year. So if you are a pay to win player and do not have a better option for a Fire Shield, you can consider picking this up. For this next part, I actually have two items to talk about and they both come from beating Kyo the Heart Crusher inside of the Void. So Kyo the Heart Crusher usually comes around during the month of February during Valentine's Day and by beating him, you can get two very good items. The first of which is a pet version of him and he has two modes basically. The first mode is a pure damage mode. He has a strong forehead attack with plus 5% damage as Mastercraft. And the second mode is a two hit attack which can paralyze the monster. It is one of the best uh, paralyzed pets for fire inside of the game though it only deals half the damage to compensate for the effect. The second item you want to get from here is the weapons. Okay so the rose weapons are uh, one of the strongest uh, skill based weapons inside of the game. You can click on it, it compresses a skill that can cause the monster to bleed. It, while it is not as strong as uh, Zabra's hammer or Gunlord or Sano's skill, but when used in combination with the Bloodsucker's armor skills or any other imbued spells, this item can uh, is probably still worth the space as it is a very very strong skill and does not have to compete against something like Zealot's Wrath for a slot like Zabra's hammer or Gunlord of Sano. And now for February's main seasonal event, which is Snuggle Fest, aka a Battle Ons version of Valentine's Day. So I'm going to go in order in the years in which the item was released, but uh, before we get started with that, the quest that we have uh, every single year without fail is the one whereby you click on all of the 8 portraits and once you complete all the quests given to you by uh, the guesses that are shown on the screen, you will unlock a shop. Okay, and inside of this shop, you can buy the Deck of Hearts spell. So the Deck of Hearts is an energy spell, causes SP users charisma and stealth intelligence for stat bonuses and it's basically just your regular damage spell. So if you are Beastmaster, you can consider picking this up. Now, next up, 2008 event, we have the very infamous Love Potion. Okay, so Love Potion is one of the best items inside of the game, miscellaneous item that is. Okay, you can click on it to spend some SP to control the monster for one turn. And this is used even at end game. so I would consider this one of the best in slot items for basically stunning the monster if you do not have the Zifinity Gauntlet time, okay? So I'll definitely recommend you guys to pick this up. Now, keep in mind here that the quest is actually locked to Guardian only, but the item is not locked to Guardian. So if you have a uh, Guardian character and a non-Guardian character on one same account, then you can use your Guardian character to do this quest and get the item during Snuggle Fest and transfer it to your non-Guardian character using the Shed Vault if you want your non-Guardian character to be able to use the Love Potion. Okay, for 2008's quest, you can also go ahead and get the revamped Carnation, Rose, and Lavender Door pets. Okay, so the Carnation Door is a Mastercraft Energy pet, okay, standard damage mode and a control mode, okay. Rose Door is a fire pet, standard damage uh, mode and a burn mode. Okay, not only does it burn the opponent, but it can, uh, can also inflict the enemy with Berserk, which is uh, basically minus 20 BTH lean for two rounds, but I think the monster does slightly increase damage. Okay, and last but not least, the Lavender Door is a Mastercraft Darkness pet, standard damage mode and a mode that can blind the monster. Okay, now moving on to 2016's, uh, Snuggle Fest event, you can get the Necromantic War spell. It is an accurate wind spell, causes SP users charisma instead of intelligence for stat bonuses. So, a uh, really good spell for Beastmasters. Next up, 2017's event, you can get the Hatana weapon. It's an accurate 20% proc melee light sword and the special, it can control the monster. If you don't have a better light weapon, then you can go ahead and get this. Truffle Fur, also from the 2017 event, is a Mastercraft Energy Miscellaneous Items, gives Energy Resistance and Charisma stat, and gives plus 5% pet and gas damage. At the end of your turn, there is a 1 over 14 chance of giving you celerity for the entire side of your field, and the monster can resist with a save. So if you don't have the Arya's Rattle or the uh, Shock Collar, you can try and use this instead. On top of that, apart from the damage boost, you also get a small chance of gaining celerity, which is what 
makes this item good. Okay, for 20 event, 2018 Snuggle Fest event, you can get the Foam Finger. This is by far the best weapon for Beastmasters, and I recommend everyone to get the level 5 version. This is the most efficient version because you do not uh, have to pay a high SP cost. At the same time, you also get the damage boost to both your pets and your guesses. Okay. For the 2018 event, you can also get the Summon Aquela. It is a uh, water gas, okay? It is a Mastercraft MP summon, and you can toggle between one hit, okay, uh, standard damage mode, or two hits, minus 50% damage, but it has a chance to daze your opponent. Okay, for 2019 Snuggle Fest event, you can get the Bow Slash Card of Hearts. It's a range slash, mag uh, slash magic fire bow slash wand. Neutral damage accuracy lean for cards, minus 6 BTH lean for the bow. On the normal and true special bow has a true special 20% proc rate one does not and just does the bow slash one special okay so basically you deal extra damage against foes that have less than one charisma okay the next item that you can get from this year's event is the candy's gown it's a fully offensive fire armor master cry we can spend sp every single turn to attempt to inflict fear on the enemy what's good about this armor is not really the fear skill but the fact that you also have a strong resist uh, secondary resist against dark as well and most monsters in the game, if they are hitting with two elements, fire and dark are two elements that they usually like to pair up with. So this is a great compression armor. For 2020, you want to pick up the Snuggle Hearts Shield. It's a very good uh, top tier fire shield that gives you a burn potence. So it's perfect for anyone who is looking to play a burn build. And you can also go ahead and get the Happy Cloud Pet. The Happy Cloud is an accurate light pet that uh, has two modes. One is your standard damage mode and the second mode can inflict a uh, daze on the opponent. So it's actually very good because the chance is pretty high at 39%, I believe. And last but not least, for 2021, which is this year's Snuggle Fest event, you definitely want to go ahead and pick up the Sunburst Amulet. By far the best miscellaneous items for burn builds out there. If you want to play a burn build, you can use the skill from this miscellaneous item and combine it with the Neko Sub Racers Armor's uh, Neko Overlord skill to basically nuke your opponent into Oblivion. For March, we have the Blani event, and Blani is essentially AQ's version of St. Patrick's Day. First of all, I'm going to go through some of the items that you can get without doing any quests whatsoever by accessing the Pass Reward Shop. So the first one is a Water and Light Compression Armor called Pirate Con. Okay, it's Mastercraft Effects goes into boosting its Magic Range and Melee Combat Defenses. If you are looking for a Compression Armor for Light and Water, then this is probably your best choice. Next up, we have the Zadig Miscellaneous Item. It's essentially a clone of Cyclops Eye, but slightly better because you can pay additional SP cost per turn for a boost of 40 strength. Okay, what it does is that after being hit with an attack, once per turn the miscellaneous item sets itself to the element, all later attacks of the element during that turn deal 40% lesser damage. So it's a really good uh, compression miscellaneous item to reduce damage taken and it essentially covers all 8 elements if the monster only attacks with a single element. Next up, I want to talk about the Ninja Lawyer Assassin Contract. This is the best free to play darkness guess inside of the game for uh, beast masters in my opinion okay while it is not as strong as Grimlock or Dekonor, which are pay-to-win options, this is the best free-to-play options, and you can see me using this guest inside of my Let's Play AQ series. You guys can go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. So you need to pay both Gold and SP in order to upkeep the guest and use its abilities, and it comes with three different abilities, the first of which is dealing extra 40% more damage, which is the 8 and a bet option. The second one is an attack that deals... Minus 34.62% damage to attempt to entangle the foe which reduces their dexterity and the last attack deals 40% uh, lesser damage and attempts to inflict bleed on the opponent which is motion to strike. Next up is the Leprechaun pet. The Leprechaun is a light damage boosting pet. It's essentially a clone of your elemental damage boosting pets that you can get from the Z token packages but it is currently the only free to play elemental damage boosting pets that you can get without spending any money inside of the game so i highly recommend every one of you guys to pick this up now it is different from your dunamis polala and Tunda in that it scales 100 percent of your charisma stat and not 
like the other generic damage boosting pets which scales off 75% of your main stat and 25% charisma. So if you do not have any charisma at all or if you're not a beastmaster, this may not be as great as those pets but I'll still highly recommend every one of you guys to go ahead and pick this up because who knows, you may want to play a beastmaster build one day and this is your only free to play elemental damage boosting option out there. The Kaze, Suchi and Hikari Shamrock Shurikens are 100% proc range weapons which are good damage weapons for rangers okay it has no true special with a plus 10 bth lean and the mastercraft gives it a 1.5 times lucky strike chance so if you're playing a ranger build i recommend picking up these weapons and last but certainly not the least we have the alchemical unity weapon okay so this is a weapon that can toggle between range and magic mode okay it's a 0% proc light weapon that starts off with minus 5 bth lean as it's mastercraft it can be toggled between dealing extra 7.5% damage to blinder enemies and dealing minus 25% damage to attempt to inflict a potent damage scaling blind effect to the enemy. This basically means that the higher the damage you deal, the greater the blind on the enemy. Okay, so it's great for huge nuking armors like the Kindred armor. You guys can check out. I actually used this strategy to go ahead and beat Gwen's house challenge gauntlet. Okay, the strategy comes to us courtesy of Oni Chan Pay to Win Collector. You guys should definitely check out his channel as well. And uh, I'll highly recommend all builds to go ahead and pick this up because you never know when you might need to one nuke the monster and at the same time you can also blind the monster with the nuke okay and the blind can go up to something crazy like minus 300 minus 400 blind and that will essentially ensure that the monster has a zero percent chance of hitting you while this weapon is sort of lacking in the damage department it more than makes up for it with its fantastic ability to inflict a super strong blind on any monster inside of the game now these last two pets that I'm going to recommend actually comes to us from last year's which is 2020's Blani event and you actually have to go ahead and replay 2020's Blani event in order to get a pets. They did not show up in the past year war Blani reward shop so you actually have to replay the 2020 event in order to go ahead and get the pets. The first one is the Gilded Leprechaun pet. It is the best light option for those who wants to play a blind build and you can toggle the pet between dealing extra 5% damage or dealing only 50 50% damage to inflict a blind scaling the monster's light resistance. The second pet is the Undead Lep Unlead Leprechaun pet. Okay, it has two modes like the Gilded Leprechaun pet. Okay, the first is a standard extra 5% uh, damage mode and the second one, you pay 50% damage to inflict a 4 turn poison. This can complement the Neko Armor's uh, dot stacking abilities quite nicely, although it doesn't benefit from the extra burn or bleed damage on the Neko Armor's. April is probably the busiest month for AQ because we have not one but two seasonal events in both the April Fool's Day as well as the Grand Walk Festival which is AQ's version of Easter. Okay so I'm going to start off with April Fool's first. So for April Fool's in the 2012 April Fool's event you can get the local costume armor and local's costume is actually quite an interesting armor. The yes three different attacks okay that can happen uh, when you click the attack button the first is a standard two hit attack and has a minus five bth and uh 85 over 80 damage the second attack is a paralysis attack which is three hits and pays 42 percent melee for a powerful paralyzed effect and the third uh attack is a healing attack that is four hits and pays 50 percent melee but heals the player hp for all of the damage dealt now keep in mind that the uh, armor is actually not master crafted so it is actually slightly weaker compared to some of the other energy master crafted armors but if you are a beast build or a pole mage build you can consider using this armor as it is actually pretty fun to use for the 2013 april fools event you definitely want to get the guardian knight server it is probably the best free to play earth weapon inside of the entire game it has no special so it deals extra eight percent damage and on top of that it triggers on the following categories Flying, Undead, Wear, Plant, Robot, Dragon, Dragonkin, Insect, Scaly, Fish, Zard, and Cute. If the monster happens to belong to any of those categories, it deals extra 2% damage and it stacks okay for monsters that belong to multiple categories okay in addition to that if the monster belongs to three or more categories the weapon will element seek among the eight standard elements making this a very very good weapon and a must pick up for every single build 
For the 2014 April Fool's event, we have the Arias Rattle Miscellaneous item. Now, this is a top choice for Beastmasters out there, and if you're a Beastmaster build, then this is def a definite must to pick up, okay? It boosts your pet damage by 45% as well as boosting its BTH by 8. On top of that, it has a super cheap SP cost for the level 150 version at only 28 SP per turn. For the 2018 April Fool's event, we have the Local Explosion spell. Now, this is a fire spell that takes a minus 24.75% damage penalty while attempting to paralyze the enemy at a very high rate. So if you want to play a sort of like stun or paralyze build, then I highly recommend you to go ahead and pick up this spell. And last but not least for this year, which is 2021's April Fool's event, I will recommend you guys to go ahead and get the Ancient Tower skill. It is a water and ice compression shield and you can click on it to switch between defending the two elements. So if you want to use a utility shield for your build and you are looking for a compression shield, then this is a great compression shield to use for water or ice element. Moving on to the next seasonal event in April, we have the Grand Walk Festival. So here are some of the items that you may want to consider getting in the Egg Hunt minigame slash quest. Okay, so first thing is the Wear Bunny Form Armor. Okay, so if you have the Perma Rare version from very, very long ago, then good for you because it recently got updated last year to become a very strong armor. But if you do not have the permanent version, then you can only get the temporary version for 4,000 eggs here, as you guys can see. Okay, it lasts until logout, but it's a very good armor. It's a fully defensive of armor. Like the other Grand War items, this armor comes with a bonus if the player has eggs from the Grand War event. As such, this armor should only be bought or used if the player has a house and the Grand Walk portal painting. If you do not have the portal painting or are too lazy to farm for eggs every single time you log in before you use this armor, then I will not advise you to go ahead and get this armor. If the player has at least 250 eggs, that much is spent and the player gains a whopping 50% damage to all weapon attacks and spells during that turn. Okay, so this is really crazy. Extra 50% damage as long as you have 250 eggs. The next item here is a pet that you can get from the permanent shop. Okay, this one you need 5,000 eggs in order to open the shop. And it comes in 8 different elements. So you can get one of each element if you like or just get the element that you really want. Okay, so the pet has two modes. One of which uh, is a paralysis mode and the other is a damage reduction mode. Okay, the damage reduction mode is similar to the Gragma height shield. Uh, reducing the damage you take from each hit by a flat amount. And as for the paralysis mode, it is slightly better than Fruitcake Zard's paralysis. But uh, this being said though, the pet is lacking in terms of damage But if you really want to play an effects beastmaster Then I highly recommend you guys to go ahead and get this pet Tyranno Chicken Rex Rider is a fully offensive wind armor which you can also get from the permanent shops by spending 5,000 eggs to open the shop and buy it. Okay, this is a slightly weaker version of the premium Grand Walk Rider without the ability to swap to an earth armor and earth skill. Tyranno Chicken Rex Rider's skill is still extremely powerful and on top of that it also has good secondary resistances to water and ice at 44% each. Last but not least, we have the Hair Razor set, which is a set that was just released this year in 2021. And what it is, is it is a set that is meant for fully defensive builds. Okay, the armor is a fully offensive water armor, but it comes with a skill that can increase your block rate. So what it does is you can hide behind the armor's M MRM skill to avoid any damage being done to you. At the same time, you can dish out large amounts of damage as well because it is a fully offensive armor. It has great synergy with the weapon and both items can be found inside of a single shop. So you only have to pay 5,000 eggs to get both the weapon and the armor. And now for the yearly specific items. Now you actually have to go and do the quests from the specific year if you actually want to go ahead and get these items. And starting off, we have the Mechalot Buckler from the 2017 Grand Walk Festival quest. Okay, so the Mechalot Buckler is one of the best Earth Shields inside of the game if you are a Beastmaster. Okay, it reduces damage you take based off your Charisma stat to a maximum of minus 7.14%. And why this is good is that it doesn't have an SP cost or any cost tied to it. So it's basically free uh, minus 7.14% damage reduction if your Charisma stat is maxed out. I highly recommend all Beastmaster builds to go ahead and get this shield. 
From the 2019 Grand Walk event, we have the Survivor's Blazing Rifle and the Survivor's Rough Rifle. They are Fire and Earth Element respectively and it is a ranged gun, has no true special and deals times 1.1 damage to compensate. Additionally, this weapon deals extra 15% damage at a cost of 23 HP per turn, making it the best range 100% proc weapon for pure non-status reliant damage. So I highly recommend all uh, rangers to go ahead and get this build whether you're a fully defensive ranger or a fully offensive ranger this is a really really good weapon for rangers who just want to dish out damage for 2021's Grand Walk Festival, we have the Spring Dryad set. Now, this is a set targeted for hybrids. So, if you're not a hybrid build, you can consider passing up this set. Okay, there are three items to the set. The weapon, the shield, as well as the armor. I would consider passing up the weapon and just get the shield. The shield is your standard water shield, but it comes with a strength and intelligence drive, both compressed into one. And you can click on it to boost both your strength and intelligence stat at the same time. So, I recommend picking this up if you're playing as a hybrid as for the armor it is a fully defensive water armor with earth secondary and compresses two skills one of which is a standard water spell like skill and the other is a toggle the toggle changes the armor's lean to fully offensive as a free effect and it changes weapon attacks and spells to hybrid stats the same way where pyre does for attacks and on top of that it makes player take minus 10% damage from all attacks this is worth 14% melee and player will heal HP equal to 21% of the damage they deal with all weapon special and spell attacks factoring out mob resistance. There is also an overcharge of spell slash skill which you can consider getting it does 4 hits and it has a extra 5% damage as Mastercraft. On top of that, it has a few extra effects that it pays damage to apply. First off, it attempts to inflict uh, Earth Elemental Vulnerability on top of the foe for the entire battle. Basically, it's the Absolute Darkness and it also has a background change if it succeeds. On top of that, it also applies a 2 turn stun and it also applies a simple minus 12.93% damage taken universal elemental shield on the player. So this spell does a lot of things but of course it is an overcharge uh, spell slash skill after all so you are paying a little bit more in terms of the cost but for so many things I think it is a great niche spell for certain uh, users. Of course it won't be useful in every single battle especially not for regular questing but against certain boss fights I can see places whereby this skill may actually come Coming useful in the future so I'll definitely consider picking it up and the last item that I want to talk about comes in the limited time shop around April every year to celebrate AQ's writer's craze birthday okay so this is a weapon that can toggle between melee and magic mode as well as fire slash harm damage okay it causes 39 SP per turn to change it to harm damage and if you do not have enough SP to upkeep it it switches back to fire damage this being said it is a great weapon for harm damage if you do not already have a harm weapon inside of your inventory so I highly recommend picking this up when this weapon returns again all right guys so that is it for part one of the aq seasonal items to get guide okay i hope you guys have enjoyed the video it took a super long time to make do stay tuned uh for part two which should be coming somewhere around next week okay and of course i want to give a huge shout out to kareem from the Gox Tavern Discord. Okay, he was the one who actually gave me the idea to make this video. I also want to give a shout out to all of the writers and people who wrote the guys over on the Adventure Quest Wiki. Okay, I took a lot of my information from there as well as the Adventure Quest subreddit and the Gox Tavern Discord as well. Okay, so most of my information come from there and uh, you can see I'm using a lot of the uh, old clips of uh, my own videos inside of this video. So yeah, if you guys like this content, be sure to give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to see more such future content, till the next time, I'm your host Carbine Gaming. Peace out.